We are driving right now on a, another rainy day in a modern vehicle because the woody doesn't need to be exposed to any more rain than necessary. We're going to visit a guy who's invited us to see the cars he's got in a field behind his shop. A lot of those cars were parked there 30, 40 years ago and they've kind of deteriorated down to a point where I'd call them sculpture. He's got another building filled with cars, interesting cars that I hope he'll invite us to see, but no guarantees, so we'll find out together. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know that I don't live terribly far from here in, in North Carolina. How did I meet this guy? Well, I met him at a car show. Uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway puts on a, a big car show twice a year called Auto Fair. And you know, you go to Auto Fair for years and you start seeing people and you start recognizing people. And uh, I know, you know, I just met him probably a 10, 12 years ago. So we became friendly and I said, and he told me, you know, I, I, he said, I know you like to look for old cars. Well, I got some old cars you want to come and look at. Lots of the cars here are not repairable. He's allowed us to come back here and film some of the cars, and some of them are pretty darn interesting cars. So let's take a look what we have. 63 Ford Fastback, 390. So it's a 390 Thunderbird motor, four barrel carburetor. Uh, you know, we've seen lots of these on Barn Fine Hunter. 63 is a good looking car, nice car to restore. So here's a, a K5 Blazer, which are becoming pretty sought after these days. Looks like it'd be a clean body. It's two-wheel drive, which is unusual. But now, you know, somebody might want this car because you could easily lower it. A four-wheel drive car, you couldn't slam it down to the ground. It seems to be in good shape, good body. Now, this car looks to be pretty clean and complete, right down to the hubcaps. But you can see a little cancer down here in the quarter panel. And right here, the floor and the rocker panel that needs some work. It looks to be that this car was painted black. The original green you can see on the floor there was kind of metallic olive green. But you know, Blazers kind of followed Broncos and now it seems like International Scouts are following them as well. Everybody wants the, the old original SUVs. So like many of the cars we see back there, we'll visit. They were bought cheap and parked here and uh, uh, for parts or for future projects, but they've just kind of sat and they weren't very desirable. Such as this. I mean, here's a, a Blazer. They weren't too desirable too many years ago, especially a two-wheel drive Blazer. But now, you know, this is a pretty darn desirable car. And it was parked here, and I don't know how long it's been here and how long it's going to be here. But, uh, you know, these cars are hidden all over the United States. And all it takes is going behind a shop like this one, and maybe you'll find something similar to what we found this morning. A two-door. It says 10,000 miles. <clears throat> so I'd imagine it's 110,000 miles. You can see the original color. I remember when they made these cars new. Uh, it's a three-door. Two front doors and on the passenger side, a third door. Not on this side. I'm not sure if that's rare or not. So here we have a, a Suburban, four-wheel drive Suburban. You know what year it is, maybe 72, 74. I'm no expert on them. Accessory wheels, 350. It's a custom 20, so I guess the 20 was the heavier duty suspension. You know, this is gonna be one of those places where there's just too many cars to spend time on each one. So we're just gonna have to walk through and look at them as a group. Now here's a 396. Now it, it's a four door Impala. I mean, that'd be a sweet motor to take out and put in, in, in something with a better body for sure. Um, Corvair, a couple of Corvairs, convertible, hard top. So that's an early Corvair, late Corvair, another early Corvair. 36 Ford. Um, there's a 56 Crown Victoria. No, I'm sorry, it's not a Crown Victoria, it's a 55 Victoria. So I think this is the 427 Impala. So here's an interesting car. You can see where the emblem was mounted right here. Checkered flags. It's an Impala, you know, what year is it? Probably 67 or so. This was a factory 427 car. I don't know if it's still got a motor in it or not. Yes, it does. A huge old big block. So, you know, this car is not worth restoring, but if you could 
purchase a car like this and then get yourself a, you know, a Chevelle, another Impala, a Nova. Ooh, that'd be killer. Uh, you pop it in there and you'd have quite a powerful car. So it seems to have, uh, I guess it was a stick. I guess it was a four-speed car. There's a hole in the floor. You know, what a shame. It was parked back here probably with the right intentions of one day restoring it. Wow. There's, there's a car back in the back corner. When I walked through here last week with the owner, he showed, pointed out a car. And it, what a shame. What a shame, but I want to share it with you. And there's really nothing left of it. So this is kind of hidden. I mean, this, that, we're, this is kind of a main street. Turn the camera around this way. There's kind of a main street just beyond those trees. But you would never know these cars are here. You know, like I, I'd pass here and I probably wouldn't know that these cars are here, except that the owner invited me back here. But there's a side road here. And this side road, if you were to take side roads, like I tell you, advise you to do, you know, that's why, that's why you find the old cars, not on main roads, but on side roads. This, uh, this car was probably, uh, at one time, the most valuable car in this whole field. And now it's just a worthless piece of junk. But this car is a, a 63 Ford. This was a 427. This was a factory 427 four-speed car. And when he got it, he got it for next to nothing. When he bought it, it was like, you know, cheap car, cheap car. At that time, it was not worth restoring. But what, what it was worth is selling the engine transmission out of it. So he sold the engine, sold the transmission, sold body parts to it, and the, the uh, inner fender panel that's over there that would say R on the serial number, well, somebody bought that, probably transferred that onto another 63, and, and they built their own uh, R-code car. But, you know, this car restored today would be such a valuable car, and now it's not worth $10. What a shame. But that just shows that, you know, cars that are not valuable at one point in their life can become valuable later on. All right, so we can go up and do that Pantera. We've been lucky on Barn Find Hunter to have found a couple of Panteras, which is, you know, that's kind of a dream. We found one in New Hampshire that was torn apart, but in pretty solid shape. It needed to be restored. We found one uh, in North Carolina, which was, it probably at least needed a paint job. And now this one. This is a, uh, an early Pantera. It's got the small bumpers. The later ones had big rubber bumpers on them. They were made by Di Tommaso in Italy, and it was, they were built in conjunction with Ford Motor Company. So this was to be the latter-day Cobra, if you can imagine that. An imported car, European car with American drivetrain, has a 351 cubic inch Cleveland engine mounted midship, mounted in the middle of the car, transaxles here, and then there's a little bit of storage space for luggage back here. Look at that. Oh, look at the turbocharged sitting there. Ha! So at some point, somebody had considered a turbocharger. There's a turbocharger and, and a Gale Banks uh, adapter on the intake manifold. Look at that. And look, look at those headers. So I guess those are turbo headers and that turbo charger would bolt right up there, I guess. It's stuck in there. But these cars came with like a, a panel that fit in here nicely. It was a, a carpeted panel. So you could actually put luggage down here and it kept it away from all the engine mechanics and grime and stuff. So this was another place you could store luggage if you were taking a trip. Pantera is an all steel car. And if you think about the mentality back in the 70s, nobody worried about rust, we were worried about horsepower. These cars weren't galvanized, they weren't particularly treated in any special way to prevent rust, and as a result, Panteras became rust buckets unless they were cared for very carefully. The rear suspension on a Pantera um, has, has, they've been known to rust out bad enough that the car has become undrivable. See, I can't, it's a little bit too dark back here to see the suspension and the frame rails that go back here, but they can develop rust. But the disturbing part about this car is that there's a seam right across here. And I'm not sure if that was a body seam 
or was once parked under a place that dripped water, but there are literally holes in the metal, the metal roof going right across here, that I can look down through holes. What a sin. What a shame. So that indicates to me that this car has problems worse than this. Around the windshield, you can see that uh, there's rust at the base of the windshield, which tells me there's more on the top. So really the only way to consider a car buying, buying a car like this is to buy it and take every single piece off this car, everything, everything. Every piece of trim, mechanical component, the interior, the gauges, the dash, and then dip the car and uh, get it rust proofed and then start welding from there because this car is gonna require fabrication for sure. There we go. Well, that's a Rube Goldberg thing. Look at that phone, baby. And if this car was last on the road in 78, it makes sense because there's a mobile phone in this car that'll give you an idea of what mobile phones were like 35 years ago. They were huge contraptions. It's like the phone that you had on at home on the wall, you'd answer, only it was mounted in a car. There's dials and gauges and buttons and a, a, and a cord. And below that's an eight track tape deck. So this is definitely of that era. Under the hood here, uh, got power brake, brake booster, windshield washer bottle and a battery and a little bit of luggage. You could put a duffel bag or maybe two small duffel bags back there and in, in the front here. And then there's a little place in the back behind the transact or over the top of the transaxle. You can store luggage as well, but not really a GT car, not something you'd get in in New York and drive to LA with very easily. So a car like this, it's a, uh, a debate. If we think about the car that we saw in New Hampshire, pretty solid car, rebuilt engine, rebuilt transmission, but it had to be assembled. It needed a paint job. It needed a fair amount of work, but it sold for $18,000 at auction soon after. Using that as a guide, what's this car worth? Well, it doesn't have a rebuilt engine or transmission, and it needs a lot of body work. So if that required $18,000, it probably needed another, I don't know, $10,000 for a paint job and maybe some more for an upholstery job. So for $18,000, probably for somewhere in the mid to high 30s, they could have had that car on the road because a lot of the mechanical work had been done. This car, however, doesn't have those positive aspects going for it. What's this car worth? Well, if they're in mint condition, mint condition, they're probably a $100,000 car. They never really climbed in value the way probably anybody expected to follow the Cobras up into the million dollar range. Uh, a car like this, I don't think I'd pay more than $10,000 for it because if you bought this car for 10 grand and you weren't handy, if you needed somebody to do the work for you, you have to start writing a lot of big checks. And those big checks could add up to $50,000, $60,000 at $55 to $75 an hour, plus the parts you'd need. You could exceed the value of this car in the restoration cost. So that's the challenge, you know? So. Therefore, it's sitting here. Probably the owner of this car doesn't know what to do with it either. You know, it's not worth fixing, but it's certainly not worth junking. So it's another piece of interesting automotive sculpture. Well, if you remember a little while ago, we walked through a wet field. Way in the corner of that field, I showed you what was left of a, an old white 1963 Ford R-Code. Wasn't much left to it. But if you remember, R-Code was a 427. Well, it's kind of cluttered with stuff here, and it's probably been off the road for a long time. But this is an R-Code 1963 Galaxy two-door hardtop, the fastback roof, four-speed transmission. It's got a vinyl top, and it's, it's burgundy right now. It's got white interior, nice combination. It may not have started life as a burgundy car. It may have been a white car. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this stuff off the, the car here and, uh, and open the hood and, and, and show you what a monster uh, 427 looks like that you were able to buy as an option on this car when it was new. And then there's a secondary lock right there. And there's the monster. I'll put my phone on here for light. You can take a look so what it looks like. So 427, it's the same looking emblem as on the fenders. This is a two four barrel car, cast iron, tubular type headers, but they're cast iron. And this is the kind of car that Holman and Moody and other teams like uh, the Wood Brothers back in the 60s would have gotten from Ford Motor Company, stripped out the interior, uh, put in a not a very structural road, roll cage, and really gone racing. I mean, that, this, this would, these were stock cars, and this was a kind of a stock car special. 
It's a really a piece of uh, automotive history and, and racing history at the same time. So what's a car like this worth? In fair condition, which is probably what this is, is the Haggerty values a car like this is $41,000. In good condition, $57,400. If it were excellent, or in number two condition, $72,500. And Concours, $91,500. $91, so, you know, this car could, you know, paint needs work, interior needs work. So it's, it's probably uh, a car that Haggerty would value at $41,000. If this gentleman decided to sell this car for $41,000, he'd have people beating down the door to buy it. Now look at all these Corvettes. I mean, you know, this guy's been restoring Corvettes for decades. What's an old Corvette worth? You know, nothing. It might be chassis that are worth fixing up. And maybe the occasional body part. Really a shame.